For Jack Interventions, we have a, a gentleman, Dr. Antonio Colombo, who is probably one of the premier developers of the whole concept of coronary stenting. Uh, professor Colombo is a professor at Columbia University School of Medicine in New York and chief of invasive cardiology at San Rafael Hospital in Milan. I am honored to talk to you, sir. Uh, let's talk about, you're known for stents, but let's talk about drug-eluting balloons for a moment. You have a paper coming up in Jack Interventions. Can you talk about it? But drug looting balloon are an important addition uh, and uh, first of all they are not a competitor of drug looting stents, uh, a complement. Uh, we know their role in, in stent restenosis. Uh, we have done a randomized study in a small vessel long lesion, a Bello study, uh, published last year. Uh, with uh, positive results. Uh, but uh, this uh, paper that uh, we will discuss now uh, is uh, an unusual group of patients uh, who had uh, severe uh, recalcitrant restenosis. Uh, and for recalcitrant, I mean uh, restenosis and restenosis two or three times. Uh, a patient with a chronic renal failure, a patient on dialysis, uh, diabetics, uh, for whom uh, another balloon dilatation did uh, really very little. They were not uh, uh, candidate for surgery. And uh, we employed uh, two technologies together, uh, placed uh, a drug eluting balloon and uh, a drug eluting stent. We use a synergy of two drugs, Paclitaxel with a drug eluting balloon and Limus with a drug eluting stent in order to really combat the aggressive hyperplastic phenomena causing restenosis. And the result had been quite good, uh, quite good in the sense that we uh, decrease the recurrence uh, uh, significantly compared to our control. Uh, these patients have a recurrence uh, uh, close to 50%, uh, and uh, we decreased uh, uh, to 20%, which is uh, very, very, very good. Let me say that this is not uh, a combination that should be used in everybody, but there are some specific group of patients uh, where this combination may be helpful. Based on the literature that we have right now, what's the role for drug eluting balloons? I mean, I know at the moment it's still an investigational, but what do you see in the future for it? Uh, the role of drug eluting balloon, I think, is established to treat instant restenosis. is uh, uh, very effective in bare metal stent restenosis, moderately effective in drug eluting stent restenosis. But the new frontier of drug eluting balloon is to treat uh, long lesions, diffuse disease, uh, smallish vessels, where we don't want to implant long stents, uh, try to avoid uh, so-called full metal jacket and uh, utilize uh, spot stenting uh, in the most severe uh, lesion and treat uh, the rest of the vessel uh, with a drug eluting balloon which uh, uh, should uh, uh, free the vessel from any permanent implant. Is there any difficulty in using it for an interventional cardiologist? Um, they are uh, relatively bulkier than standard balloon, so you need a little bit more lesion preparation. You need uh, a better guide, good guiding catheter, but uh, I think uh, a, a solid intervention should uh, be able to use them 90% uh, of the time. Uh, there are some lesions where these devices are difficult to go, but uh, only maybe one out of 10 or less. And often you're using the original, you know, an actual balloon or atherectomy device first before you get around to using the drug eluting balloon. Yes, sir. the lesion needs to be prepared uh, because the drug eluting balloon is not supposed to dilate much. The vessel is supposed to deliver the drug. Uh, one point I like to make in this uh, uh, interview is that uh, there is a difference between one drug eluting balloon and the other. So we should... Uh, compare the result uh, with drug balloon A with drug balloon A and not uh, consider the result a class result. Oh, that's uh, a good point. Because it's very important, uh, is uh, like stents or any other device, uh, the result of one device 
are not necessarily applicable to the other device. And uh, what research are you doing right now on drug-eluting balloons that you would like to just mention? Uh, we are trying uh, uh, to convince uh, uh, some drug-eluting balloon company to launch a well-done randomized trial in this type of very high-risk patient, uh, patient on dialysis, uh, renal failure, uh, severe uh, diabetics uh, on insulin, who have a very, very high risk of restenosis, who cannot be treated uh, with surgery uh, to combine a drug-eluting stent plus a drug-eluting balloon versus the standard of care, which is a simple drug-eluting stent. Does paclitaxel and everolimus work together? Do they fight with each other? How, how well do they go together? Because usually in most, in most places you're using one or the other. Here Absolutely. you've got both of them. How do they play well together? I think we have, um, we have uh, very little knowledge uh, about that. Uh, but uh, in the first critique, uh, is, uh, is that dangerous? Is that safe? Right. Uh, so far in our patient, uh, we did not see any sign of, uh, uh, of uh, unsafety. Uh, we are very meticulous uh, about dual antiplatelet therapy. But again, we are discussing about patients who do not have other options. Uh, that's the reason why we take maybe a little bit of a risk. But so far, by giving uh, appropriate antiplatelet therapy, obtaining a good result, uh, we did not see any sign of, uh, of thrombosis or uh, additional risk. Terrific. Well, thank you, sir. I appreciate the time. And for uh, Jack Interventions, you will find this paper by Dr. Colombo and others in Jack Interventions, the November issue for Cardiosaurus World News. I'm Rick McGuire. <laughs>